you all. I'm very pleased to be here presenting for you on Amerigo. Amerigo is a different type of, uh, of copper producer. Uh, you will see through our presentation that we don't consider ourselves uh, a copper mine. We are, in fact, not a copper mine. We have a copper factory where we are producing sustainable copper for uh, the green economy. So it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great place to be at. Um, Forward looking information. So what is our value proposition at Amerigo? As I mentioned before, we are in fact a copper factory. We have a very simple and sustainable business model that results in predictable operations and predictable cash flow. That allows us to pay a dividend. We currently have a, a yield of 11.3% on our regular dividends. And I will be speaking through the presentation about how our capital return policy works. At Amerigo, we're looking to welcome new long-term investors like yourselves that we're looking for investors that are interested in yield, in value, in ESG, because in fact, we have unique ESG credentials, the most significant of which is that we are producing critical materials, copper and molybdenum from waste streams. This is a quick view of our corporate structure. We have 166 million shares outstanding, a market cap of 176 million Canadian. As I mentioned, our yield is 11.3%. And some of the metrics from our June the 30th balance sheet, which is our latest reporting um, document, we had cash of 53 million US, debt of 27 million US, and we have returned uh, for the first half of the year, 20.5 million US dollars to our shareholders. So what do we do at Amerigo? We essentially capture lost value through operational excellence, that lost value being copper that would otherwise be lost. In doing so, we are providing critical building blocks for the green economy. And we are in fact eliminating the world's need for a 20,000 tons per annum copper mine, which is a mid-sized copper mine. Now, how do we do that? We essentially receive the waste streams from one of Chile's largest copper mines. Then in our copper factory, we're processing those waste streams to recover copper and molybdenum. We get market prices for the copper and molybdenum that we recover and we return capital to our shareholders. Amerigo can be very easily understood if I make the analogy with a wastewater treatment plant. Why? Because both of them are uh, basically built on simple and proven technologies. At Amerigo, essentially what we're doing is that we are receiving the waste material from a copper mine in order to process it and produce further value in the form of copper concentrates, molybdenum concentrates. Our final concentrates are in the same shape, form, and with the same characteristics as the concentrates that would be produced by a traditional mine operation. Those are the differences. What are some, uh, so th those were the similarities. What are some of the differences? One of the key differences is, is the yield. Um, a wastewater treatment company usually pays a yield of around 4%, as I'm showing with these examples here. At Amerigo, we're paying a yield of 11.3%. And the reason why we can do that is based on the fact that our profitability is based on the very real demand for copper. Copper uh, will always be required. It has uh, grown in, in demand requirements anywhere from 1% to 2% consistently year on year. Uh, it is estimated that additional demand uh, driven by the energy transition will represent a further 4 to 5% on an annual basis of incremental demand for copper. That speaks very well to support copper prices. And in our case, that um, 
profitability driven by, by copper prices is further enhanced by the fact that we have very low capital requirements. We have invested in our plant what we needed to invest to achieve very consistent operations. Uh, we don't need to do a lot of uh, investment other than sustaining CAPEX. And thus, we have the ability to maximize the return of capital to shareholders. Another advantage that we have is that we essentially work in a very uh, strategic relationship with the world's biggest copper producer in Chile. And as you will see in the presentation, we consider that to be uh, a top jurisdiction to be conducting copper business. Our ESG credentials are existent. Uh, we are not aspiring to be good ESG citizens, we already are. We are participants in the circular economy because we're capturing lost value of critical materials. We're generating important sources of employment in Chile. More than a thousand employment, uh, employees uh, are, are uh, um, supported by our operations. We have diversity, we have a diverse board female CEO, female CFO. Our operations are powered fully with renewable energy. We are reducing third-party environmental liabilities by processing these waste streams. And we are extremely efficient in water reutilization. So we are not a mining company and these are some of the arguments that we always use to differentiate ourselves. Uh, one important aspect, we don't have any environmental liabilities. We are not ex uh, spending um, huge amounts of money exploring for future reserves. We don't have a single geologist on our payroll. We have minimal sustaining capex. And as I mentioned, we are essentially eliminating the world's need for a mid-sized copper mine through the copper that we're recovering in our operation. We consider that Chile uh, is a great place to be conducting copper business. It has for us very minimal jurisdictional risk. Uh, Chile is the world's largest copper producer. They are producing around 28% of the world's uh, copper supply. So they understand copper, they value copper. It is a very copper centric country. Copper is in fact known as the salary of Chile. It is the building block of Chile's economy. In our case, uh, another advantage is that we have uh, a long-term relationship with Codelco's El Teniente mine, which is the mine from which we're getting our material. Now, you may ask, who is Codelco? Codelco is the world's biggest copper producer. They are producing around 8% of the world's copper. It is a state-owned company and it is um, a fundamental uh, enterprise in Chile. So America is providing additional copper, additional income to Chile, uh, and we consider uh, that to, to represent a minimal jurisdictional risk for our operations. Uh, another aspect that's worth mentioning is that we virtually have inexhaustible material to process. Uh, we've spoken that we get our waste material from El Teniente, which is the largest underground copper mine in the world. Um, El Teniente began operations in 1905, and it still has a life of mine projected to run for another 60 years to 2082. We have a long-term strategic agreement to continue processing this waste material. In terms of growth, um, we are looking for similar opportunities and when the right opportunity comes, if it comes, uh, we will consider it. We would love to replicate our success uh, story uh, that we have built at El Teniente with other operations. Of course, we would prefer to continue our growth with, uh, with Codelco, but until we find the right opportunity, the opportunity that makes perfect sense for us, we will continue returning our capital to shareholders. So let's look at our simple return of capital model. The building block is the statement that I've made before, because we do not require growth capital, we are in a position and we will continue to return capital to shareholders. How do we do that? We have quarterly dividends and those dividends have been designed to be safe, to be predictable, to be paid each quarter. 
We want those to be uh, a known feature and something that people can feel very safe about. Um, because the quarterly dividend uh, is set at a rate where it is sustainable, which is currently three cents Canadian per share per quarter, and that represents the 11.3% yield that I was talking about, in periods of high copper prices, uh, they are not enough to distribute all the capital to shareholders. And that's when performance dividends come into play. We haven't yet declared a performance dividend, but performance dividends are designed to be flexible in all aspects, uh, in terms of how often we can declare them, in which amount, uh, et cetera. And then we also have share buybacks. Uh, in the last year, we have reduced about 10% of our shares outstanding through a substantial bid and what's known in Canada as a normal course issuer bid. So the foundations of our capital return model are essentially a return capital because it's not required. We have multiple tools to do so. Uh, we provide high yields uh, that can be higher at higher copper prices. We're reducing our shares uh, outstanding and we're using the strategy to become the preferred holder for yield, value and ESG investors. We're very highly levered to copper prices. Uh, in our presentation, uh, you can see that at different copper prices, the amount of free cash flow to equity that we generate is substantially higher uh, at, the, at the higher end of, of, of the range. Uh, average copper prices for 2022 are about $4.12 per pound, so uh, closer to the $4 uh, dollar column in our example. Copper is fundamental uh, to the energy transition. Uh, in our case, we consider that an average copper price of $3.80 guarantees the current dividend, and anything over that uh, enables us to be in the territory of share buybacks and or performance dividends. So essentially, the performance dividend is guaranteed uh, over a two-year time frame, and shareholders should not be concerned about copper price volatility. Um, copper has been a superlative uh, inflation hedge. Uh, we are paying a very robust yield compared to other high uh, paying dividend stocks. And in summary, we have uh, we are in the sweet spot of having an operation that is already performing uh, at its maximum uh, under high copper price scenarios. And we're in a position of returning the capital to shareholders. Um, appendices are available in our presentation. I wouldn't like to waste our Q&A time on that right now. I think that's the end of the presentation and we're open for Q&A, uh, Gilbert. Thank you, uh, Aurora. So we have collected a few questions ahead of today also. So uh, here is the first one from an investor asking, uh, Aurora, what's your own background and experience. What do you do differently since you took over as CEO of the company? Because the company seems to have been around for quite a bit of long time. Yes, I have been with the company for almost 20 years as CFO. And almost three years ago, I was promoted to CEO. And uh, so I know the company quite well. I know our team in Chile. Uh, my first language is Spanish. So I understand them very well in the cultural uh, drivers that uh, that people in Chile um, uh, like and, and, and work well with. So essentially what we focused on has been on three tiers, having uh, full maximum production capacity, full operational continuity, and creating the financial uh, um, returns that have enabled us to start returning capital to shareholders. We started doing our return of capital uh, at the end of last year, and it's been a, um, you know, a, a robust time for us. Uh, we, re we reduced our shares outstanding by 10% in just over 12 months, and we rolled out our dividends. So it's, um, uh, we're, we're very proud of, of the work that has been done in the last two years on behalf of shareholders. The next question asking, can you replicate such a day, this operation success in other countries nearby or is just mainly in Chile? Look, we consider ourselves expert in copper uh, waste stream reprocessing. Uh, we, uh, there are operations that are doing zinc uh, in other parts of the world, operations that are doing uh, reprocessing of gold uh, streams uh, in Africa. 
Uh, we would love to continue doing this in Chile because of jurisdictional uh, risk, uh, lack of risk that I mentioned in our presentation. Uh, Chile has significant copper deposits that are subject to this type of operation. Of course, there are considerations. One of them is allocation of, of the mine versus the, the reprocessing facility. And of course, the modeling of the, of the agreement, right? If you were to do this for a fee, without the exposure to copper prices, it probably wouldn't be a business that would interest us, but it could be replicated for sure. Great. Uh, this question coming from live from the audience uh, for Henry. He's asking about the operation. Is the tailings from the smelter, is, are they used for, to process to the concentrate? No, what we reprocess are essentially the, the tailings coming out of a concentrator of a copper mine. Uh, what we produce is a copper concentrate that then has to go into a refinery and a smelter uh, for, further, uh, for further treatment. Okay. And uh, uh, you talk about, about uh, dividend yield history, right? Um, so can you, can you sort of repeat that? Uh, this person asking about your dividend yield history for the past uh, three years? We reinstated, America used to be a dividend player uh, in the prior copper cycle, 2005 to 2008, and then 2011 and 12. We suspended the dividend in 2012. We reinstated it last uh, year at a rate of two cents Canadian per share per quarter. And we increased that to the current yield, which is three cents Canadian per share per quarter. Okay, and this question, uh, will be the last question, uh, and we'll, it, it'll talk about copper price environment. So will Amerigo's business suffer in a low copper price environment or, or any, any sort of break-even point at all? Look, um, uh, our operation has been in continuous operations for 30 years without shutting a single day uh, under much lower copper price environments than what we're having. Uh, one of the attributes that we have in our business model is that our royalty that we pay to El Teniente uh, for the material that we receive is lower at lower copper prices. And that produces a significant protection in lower copper price environments. So we're not worried about uh, the cyclicality of the business. We've always been able to keep our nose out of the head under significantly lower copper prices. Great. Uh, thank you for your time, Aurora. There's just some couple of audience want, want to know more about your company's information. Is that who is the right person to contact? Is it you or? Whoever? You should contact me uh, at my email, ad at amerigoresources.com, and I'll be happy to follow up on any questions. Sure. We'll also let all the audience know about this uh, in our follow-up as well. Thank you. Aurora, I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.